My name is Juliet Hidalgo. I'm the Senior Communication Strategist for Office of the Provost, and I've had the pleasure now of working with the remarkable, legendary Provost Brian Jerski for the last four years. Wow, I can't believe that. And as many of you know, he is retiring, and our campus is so sad to see him go. But we know that he has many fun adventures ahead of him, and we just cannot wait to see and see on Facebook all the cool pictures and places you and Ben get to go. I mean, I personally can't, I can't wait. So that being said, just kind of want to hear from you a little bit um, as you, before you go and tell us about like your time at CSLB. If you could talk about it generally, how do you feel like it went? Well, thanks Juliet and thanks people for watching. Uh, it's, a, it's a sort of happy and sad time for me, as you can imagine. Um, I have spent five years at Cal State Long Beach and I think for me they've in many ways been the happiest years of my life. Um, you know, I think as many of you know, I'm, I'm a great believer in, in human imperfection and um, uh, all human institutions are imperfect. Um, but Long Beach is one of the least imperfect institutions in academia I've ever worked in. And um, I say that uh, with great admiration and pride that I've been fortunate enough to be part of, of, of this great university for five years. Um, the times have been momentous, I think. We've seen tremendous political change, tremendous social change. Uh, we've seen which I'm very pleased about, increasing student engagement in those issues, which has been great. Uh, we've had a massive once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, I hope, and that's been interesting. Uh, but through it all, I think Cal State Long Beach shines uh, like a light. Uh, I think I said that at my first, uh, very first convocation, I said that uh, Cal State Long Beach was a light in, in the darkness, and I still think it is. And it's been an incredible privilege, and I'm really proud to have done what, I, uh, what I've done. So that's my time. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. So what, what would you say you're going to miss most about <laughs> CSLB? Okay, what I'll miss most, I think, are the people uh, at Long Beach. Uh, firstly, our great students, many of whom I get to meet and interact with, uh, inspire me whenever I do and remind me about why I chose this career, really. Uh, because it's uh, transmitting the knowledge we have, imperfect as it is, to the next generation and seeing that uh, <clears throat> the world will be in good hands. And I know from our students uh, that it will be in good hands, and that's great. Of course, my colleagues, all the wonderful people I work with, uh, the deans, the faculty, um, President Connolly, uh, <clears throat> colleagues across uh, the CSU, outside the CSU. Um, I'll miss all of you. And um, <clears throat> then, you know, the, the, the glue that, that makes the university function, which is the staff, uh, I'll, miss, uh, I'll miss the devotion and the passion and, and the, the dedication to our mission which shines out of the light, uh, shines out of the eyes of, of all our staff. It's really an, an amazing institution. And so I'll, I'll, I'll miss, miss everything about that. Mm. We're, gonna, we're gonna miss you too. <laughs> so that being said, what do you feel like uh, you would give advice to the new provost coming in? Dr. Karen Sism Gum coming on, who seems amazing, but what advice would you give her? Well, you know, the advice I would give her is to just be her best self. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I've seen of her, I've, I've been interacting with her uh, recently. We've had several meetings. Um, what I said on LinkedIn, I think, was that I am thrilled and delighted that Cal State Long Beach is in good hands mm -hmm. and uh, good hands of, of Dr. Gunn. And I know she has her vision and her <clears throat> passions. And of course, many of those intersect and overlap with mine. 
But the whole point about having a new provost is that there's going to be new directions, new excitement, new innovations, and um, new traditions. And uh, I'm sure the campus will welcome her as warmly as it welcomed me. And uh, certainly I wish her well, and I'm 100% confident that she'll do a terrific job for the university in, in the next uh, few years while she's guiding the academic mission. So advice, be yourself, be your best self, and I'm sure she needs none of that from me. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been fun getting to know her. Um, what, what advice would you give for the campus? The advice I would give to the campus is just keep keep being uh, the great place that that you are, and you know change uh, change is difficult, uh, change is inevitable, and uh, one of the great things about Cal State Long Beach is that by and large uh, we're, we're, we we work together towards our goal. And by together, I don't mean with unanimity, I'm not talking about North Korean type of forced uh, unanimity, but I'm talking about the devotion to the mission and the, the students who we serve. And as long as we keep that in mind, uh, we can go forward. Mm -hmm. Some of us will make changes, some of us will stay the same, some of us will want to revert to past practices, and that's all fine because there are many diverse paths to the same mission and Cal State Long Beach uh, has done so well in the past, so well in the present, and I'm sure so well in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you said it perfectly. I think that that's probably the one thing that I've seen you really do well is lead a team. So I guess what advice would you have for creating and developing a team? That's something that I've seen you, you do so effortlessly, but what's your secret sauce? I think my secret source, for what it's worth, uh, is a recognition that no one person uh, can know everything or do everything or be everything. And that one of the incredible treasures of, of being in an academic community like this is that uh, there are so many talented um, people around me who can do things better than I can, who I can reach out to, to help with, to uh, rely on and, and to work together. And so uh, give people a strategy, give people a vision towards which they can move. And for example, President Connolly does that brilliantly. And then when you have that, uh, collect a group of talented people to move you towards that and give, give people space to express their talents and, and, um, and, and ideas and visions and uh, the rest takes care of itself. Mm. Support people. Uh, my, my job is not to make people do things, but to support people as they develop the ideas they want to do. I'll give you a good example. So, and it involves you, Juliet. So you came to me, I think two years ago and said, how about doing some podcasts? And my reaction was, oh God, I know nothing about podcasts and I'm nervous. And yet we've together, based on your talent and your skills, uh, been able to speak to all the colleges, uh, including just recently the library, and get to know what's happening on the campus, what's working. Again, a little example, but it's something that I could never have done that, but because of your skills, I was able to do it. And so that, there's an example. Mm, well, thank you for that. <laughs> So um, that being said, so I think, if, who would you say would be a role model for you on campus? Like, who have you seen that you just think of oh, this as somebody I can really emulate from? Gosh, you know, there's so many people um, who've been role models. I mean, first and foremost, I would say is President Connolly. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she has the, uh, she has the vision uh, she's got incredible people skills. She's got great intuition. 
Uh, she's got deep intellectual uh, roots in positive psychology and many other things which, are, which enable her to be a great supportive leader. And I'm constantly in awe of the mm -hmm. amount of emotional and intellectual uh, effort that she can, uh, she can provide without exhausting herself. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so she's a role model uh, for all of us, I, I, I am sure. Um, many other people on campus, for example, the current or, or recent, most recent former chair of the Senate, uh, Jessica mm -hmm. Pandya, has been, you know, an amazing leader in tumultuous times, uh, able to guide us through difficult, uh, through difficult uh, pandemic times. Um, the, the, the chairs of most of the departments have been, you know, stalwart supporters and incredibly diligent and hardworking to, to make the university carry on in, in the middle of things. It, it's almost, you know, the question, I was thinking about this question and, and I converted it and I would, I was thinking, it might even be easier for me to say who who hasn't been a role model mm. because there's so many people who have been mm -hmm. the staff who've come in and worked so hard the the deans the senior staff the facilities people the janitorial staff the uh, you know our campus looks beautiful even through this nightmarish pandemic time and that's because of people's work mm -hmm. uh, so um it, it's difficult to to pick someone who's not a role model mm. i think you're absolutely right i feel like you i feel like we really see the very best of people at the very worst of times just seeing people really step up it's been pretty incredible and i yeah it's been fun to watch you know um so what would you how would you if you could use one word to describe your time on campus as a provost what would you say i know it's hard to pick one word but if you had to pick one word what would it be exhilarating oh that's a good one because exhilarating can go it can be really fun and exciting and exhilarating can be a little bit scary <laughs> so, that's okay. true <laughs> kind of yeah, encompasses it all <laughs> it sort of does <clears throat> and but you know i wanted to pick a word that was that was as you say a bit scary but but mostly positive and you know, when I wake up in the morning and I think, wow, what an amazing job I have. I get to work with brilliant, passionate people. <clears throat> I uh, experience the gamut of intellectual excitement uh, of an academic environment. Um, we have a you know, uh, an incredibly exciting mission to uh, provide all these resources to people across the spectrum uh, of diversity, ethnicity, intellectual ability, physical ability. Uh, we see the we see the very best of human beings, whether it's on the basketball court, in the classroom, uh, you know, in 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 a meeting. Um, or, or just interacting with each other. And so that, that ability to see the best of people is, is a rare and, and, and unique one and mm -hmm. I've treasured it. But I have to say that when you're around people, you do bring out the best in people. You have that uncanny knack to just make the person that you're around, you know, feel special and feel heard and feel seen. So that I know about you. Well, thank you for that. I, I would argue, but uh, not, not in this venue. But. <laughs> so I would say, what do you, um, super important question, but what do you feel like you're most looking forward to with retirement? What are you just like, can't, I know you're counting down the days, but what are you like looking forward to? Well, uh, you know, there's, there's, uh, <laughs> let's just put it this way. There's some parts of academic administration that are tiring. Mm -hmm. And so, what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 
be looking forward to you know uh, uh, not having those to to face. Uh, but what I'm most looking forward to, I think, is is the opportunity to spend time with uh, with my spouse Ben and mm -hmm. his family, my family, our friends, uh, to explore new things and to. Um, um, <clears throat> To, to see more of the world, uh, to spend more time, I think, just um, being being instead of striving. Mm. And uh, I don't mean to sound overly philosophical, but uh, you know, when you get to my age, uh, you sometimes want to just think a little bit about the past and. Uh, use it to 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 design a new future so for me i mean and uh and ben and so that's what we'll be doing it's very exciting so mm. i can't wait to see like what you guys like i said i can't wait to see your adventures because i know that that you know that being said what do you feel like is your first big vacation planned do you have a big <laughs> Well, our first big vacation plan is um, is is a domestic one. We're we're planning. Mm -hmm. We've never really been to many of the national parks, mm -hmm. and so in particular Zion and mm -hmm. uh, those those mm -hmm. ones, uh, we thought we would try a road trip uh, to experience those. Wow. Okay. And so that's first, and um, then we're planning a sort of more traditional relaxation uh hawaii holiday mm. uh, so that's coming up for my birthday in october and uh then it's um i don't know uh you know it it looks like uh europe is going to be uh opening up to tourism next year so next year um my niece is going to be studying at Oxford for a year. She's doing a master's in refugee settlement. Mm. Um, and she wants to save the world. And uh, mm. that's great that she does. Um, but we plan to visit her probably in, in late spring uh, next year. Uh, we'll visit some really good friends of mine and Ben's. Uh, at Oxford as well, and my family and Ben's family in, in England. And um, since we're in Europe, we will also be visiting, I think, with Norbert Schura and mm. Susan Carlyle, who are on sabbatical there <clears throat> in Berlin. And uh, so uh, I guess between England and Berlin, we'll be forced to drop into Paris. Terrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, if you and have so, to, <laughs> if you must. <laughs> yeah, if we must. So, you know, we're, we're, uh, another reason that I thought retirement would be good is because, as you can see, we're fortunate enough to have the means to travel now and we're still relatively young, relatively healthy. So, mm -hmm. uh, do what we can. Mm -hmm. and so, those are our plans that should take us through to about June. After that, don't know. <laughs> well, if you ever need somebody to assist you in any of those travelings, I'm just going to volunteer myself just to sort of carry I luggage. I I don't know. I can do speaking. If you talk to anybody, I can do some you know written stuff. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I'm open. <laughs> okay, I'm keeping a list. <laughs> okay. So I just want to just. Uh, Take a moment just thank you for being an incredible boss for being an incredible leader for our campus just for being you know you and like i said you really have taken i think i've told you this a hundred times but i don't think i've met it's very rare to meet somebody who makes another person that you're in front of shine that you really see the person and you accept them and you love them and you know oh. it's like i think that lets people be who they are and have ideas and feel free to run and be creative because they have that space that you've given them and that you come alongside and partner with them. So thank you. Of course. Thanks, Juliet. Thank you for, so for this uh, uh, <laughs> interview. And uh, it's fun to be on the other side of the camera, as it were. That's true. It's kind of fun. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. So, but you uh, just are, yeah, you're amazing. It's so fun. What a joy. What a, what a ride. It has been. Yeah. And, 
Um, I think, yes, if you said, what, what do I wish people? I, I wish people joy. I wish people happiness. I wish people uh, fun. Uh, life is short. Uh, be positive. Um, who knows what happens before and afterwards. But uh, while we're here, make, make the moment shine. So. Well, thank you so much for doing this. And I hope we got to know a little bit more about you, which I think we did. So thank you. Great. Okay. Well, go beach. <laughs> go beach.